EHR interoperability remains out of reach, but can this be changed? Find out in this issue of Medical Economics. I think you're going to see a whole new group of companies come into existence whose sole purpose is to enable this massive data set that exists and evolves and put a lens on it and a filter and a lens and provide it at the point of care so doctors can make the best decision in guiding their patient. EHR systems are now used by almost every physician in the United States. Now the challenge is, how do we get EHRs to talk with each other? Achieving interoperability is now a concerted effort by the federal government, EHR vendors, and many other players to make it easier for physicians and health systems to share patient records. Calling this a challenge is an understatement. Physicians need this functionality to achieve the central tenets of value-based care which requires coordinating care between providers, hospitals, labs, and myriad other players. The sad reality is many doctors still rely on fax machines for many of these functions. So how can the healthcare system achieve true and functional interoperability? Today, we are joined by Dr. Andrew Pecora to talk through the challenges and opportunities of EHR interoperability. So Dr. Pecora, why is EHR interoperability such a challenging issue? Well, interoperability, um, which has several meanings, to a doctor, it means one thing. I need information when I need it, and I shouldn't have anything get in the way of me getting it so I can best treat my patient. And the problem is, is that that doesn't exist today. So as an example, if I see a brand new patient and I'm on EHR system one, and EHR system one doesn't talk to EHR system two, I can't even get their prior medical records without calling, having them printed, faxed to me, while the patient's sitting in the waiting room waiting for me to see them. That's just nuts. And so that's a very basic level. When you go across all the information content, particularly in cancer, you know, I need genomics information, I need the latest CAT scan report, I need toxicity profiles, I need to know what doses of medicines were given, when were they given, were there side effects, and I need to do the calculus of all of that before I walk in the room to know what I'm gonna to say to the patient, or at least to know what to look for. Right now, that is not, if it's not under all one information system within one healthcare system, that's very hard to get and do. That should not be allowed. We are here for the patients. We collectively, the doctors, the nurses, the healthcare systems, the EHR companies, the data content people, and we have to make sure that information is readily available so doctors can best treat their patients and so patients can best know what's best for them. Why is EHR interoperability such a challenging issue? Well, interoperability has several issues that make it a challenge. One is technical, right? And I'm not a technology expert, but my understanding is up until a few years ago, the ability, the actual ability to get content from one to another was not necessarily there. The other is the idea of ownership. Who owns the data? You know, does the EHR own the data? Does the patient own the data? Who owns the data? And while most people believe if it's my data as a patient, it's my data, my doctor should have access to anything, that's not quite how it works yet. Now, I think that's coming. And then the third thing is the practical. You know, not every hospital system, not every physician has the wherewithal of a major corporation. Information technology is complicated. So if I'm a doctor in a, in a private office, and I even if I have an EHR in my office, the ability of that EHR to connect to my hospital's EHR is not necessarily readily available. So I think we're still a couple years away, and this is gonna take legislation, and I know Congress and our leaders, our political leaders, understand this as a problem. CMS understands this as a problem. It'll eventually be dealt with. But I think this is a multi-leveled problem that needs to be adjudicated by each constituency, and it's gonna take some time to resolve. How do you think a lack of interoperability has held back value-based care? Well, it's hard to know value if you don't know the information, if you don't have the information. You know, what is value-based care? the best possible outcome for the individual patient and the lowest total cost of care for the population you're serving. So if you're a doctor, it's your 
patients that come to your practice. If you're CMS, it's half the United States or something like that. So how do you enable the right outcome for the individual patient each and every time, but yet lower total cost of care? There are companies that are now in the marketplace that have been built to do this, but these are early days. And how this is all going to come together um, is gonna to be a matter of time to see. But ultimately, I believe that no different than when you put in your GPS, you wanna go from where you are to someplace you've never been before, it will show you all the possible routes and then the best route for that moment. I think we're gonna see the equivalent of that in healthcare within the next year or two or three. What role should the government take in achieving interoperability? Do you think the private sector can handle this on its own? Well, you know, if I think this one is going to have to be both because right now the real question is it's a matter of property. If content is in my system, it could be my laboratory system, it could be my EHR, it could be notes in my drawer, who does that content belong to? Who has rights to it? What are those rights? And it's layered on top of that the complexity of privacy with HIPAA and those sorts of things. So this is a meaty complex issue, but fundamentally it needs to be resolved that a doctor at the point of care with a patient in front of them and that patient's consent, there should be no obstacles to that physician getting the information they need to make the best possible decision for their patient at that point in time, in real time. I don't think anybody argues with that. It's just a question of how do you get there and respect property rights, IP, intellectual property, and all the other things, and ensure privacy, that's why I do think the government needs to be involved in this one. So some believe that interoperability would improve if patients had more control and access to their data. Uh, what do you think about this? What are the pros and cons of this approach? Data is not the same thing as information. So the caution I think people have is data without information can be dangerous meaning that you're a patient, you look something up, you misinterpret a test, you're a patient and you get a complex genetic profile without an explanation to the benefit of the pros and cons of the information. Um, people are worried about that. Uh, also, the doctor-patient relationship is still a sacred thing. And of course, patients have the right to access to their information, but it has to be in the context of a caring relationship with a healthcare provider that can interpret the complexity. And I think that's a concern that if people have access to everything and it's not filtered, it might lead to harm. And so that is a bit paternalistic and some people may feel it's that way, but as a practicing doctor, I don't think it is because the biggest thing I worry about is my patients being afraid and of course they have to get the right care, but I don't want them afraid and I don't want them to have unfiltered data without the context of what it means and the benefit of providing a caring environment to explain it. And I think most doctors would feel that way. One practice that really frustrates physicians is data blocking. So what does the healthcare system need to do to make it easier for organizations to switch their systems? Well, that's a, that's a big question because that involves interoperability, intellectual property, um, privacy. So I think it goes back to the question before. While we all know what it should be, if you have one system and you want to go to a next system, all of the information should flow readily. But who pays for that? Who, who, who incurs the cost of that? These are things that will have to be worked out. And I believe the marketplace will work them out. And ultimately, the consumer of healthcare, the patient, I think will drive this indirectly and directly. But this is not here today. It's still a conversation. One of the ongoing trends in the market has been EHR vendor consolidation. Do you think this has a chance to improve interoperability? It could improve interoperability as the market contracts, or it could create um, uh, you know, huge corporations that are going to protect their IP, and their IP is the content in their EHR, not the EHR. And so it could be as big a problem as it is a benefit. And again, I think that's why, um, you know, who owns the information? Does the EHR company own the information? 
I don't think so. The patient own the information? Probably, I would think so. Did the doctors own any of the information? They put it in? Possibly. So this has to be worked out. So how can we get physicians more usable data to improve treatment decisions and patient outcomes? Well, I think that's a huge market opportunity. Um, as you know, I'm the founder of a company, CODA, uh, CODA Cancer, Health Track, Cancer Outcome Tracking Analysis. Uh, it's dedicated itself to provide actionable information at the point of care, real world evidence and analytics to allow for patients to have better outcomes, enable their doctors to make better choices, and to reduce total cost of care. And CODA is not alone in this. There are others that are doing this as well. So I think you're going to see a whole new group of companies come into existence whose sole purpose is to enable this massive data set that exists and evolves and put a lens on it and a filter and a lens and provide it at the point of care so doctors can make the best decision in guiding their patients. And for patients to have access to it too so they can make the best informed decision for themselves.